Well, as has been said a number of times this morning already, today is Trinity Sunday. And so, reading from Paul's uh, book to the Ephesians, his letter to the Ephesians, um, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7 and 11 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. He, that is Christ himself, granted that some are apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine of people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in the building itself, in building itself up in love. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Today is Trinity Sunday. Did you know that? Where we celebrate, as Pastor Heather so beautifully said with the kids, although I have to admit I was watching the two small kids crawl towards each other. No offense, Pastor Heather. We celebrate the unfathomable mystery of God's being as a three in one and one in three. It's a day of adoration and praise of the one God who is infinite, incarnate, and intimate. And we don't just believe in one triune God, although we do believe, right? But as Paul seems to allude here with all of his one phrases, we actually participate and belong to the oneness of God. The oneness of the Spirit, the oneness of Creator God, the oneness of Jesus the Lord. And we open ourselves to that loving oneness with God and with one another and with all of creation. Listen to this unifying oneness of God in the church, just these phrases that Paul uses, one body, one hope of our calling, one faith, one baptism, one God of all who is above all, through all, and in all. I'm not sure you can be more comprehensive than that. (laughs) This oneness that exists in God's being is not static or simply an intellectual belief that we say, yes, I intellectually and theologically assent to this idea. But it's an actual divine life that has flow and energy and movement to it Perhaps not unlike the wind this morning. Or, and I steal this idea or borrow this idea from Richard Rohr, like a fidget spinner. You remember the fidget spinner? You hold it in the center, right? And it has three arms and legs on it. I'm afraid to let go of my papers. Um, 
And when you spin it fast enough, you see one movement, but it has three arms to it. Three distinct parts, but when in motion, the three work together in concert and in harmony with one another, spinning and moving seamlessly so that, so that you only see one being in motion. Think about that with me for a moment. The triune God is one being in motion. Perhaps, and I think Heather's right, we, 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 we get in trouble when we start to try to explain the Trinity, right? So I'm tipping my, sticking my toes in these waters a little bit. But perhaps God is more verb than noun. Perhaps God is more flow and energy than matter and substance. Perhaps God is more movement and dance, Yuna, than static and stationary. Perhaps God is more relationship than individual. Perhaps God is more invitational and participatory than self-sufficient and self-reliant. When I hear Psalm 8 that Lenore read for us, I imagine that to some extent this is how the universe was created. Some 13.8 billion years ago, the three-in-one God dancing and spinning within God's own self and out of the overflow of God's own self, love created cosmic energy and boom, the world was created. An explosion of infinite love pouring out into all things and eternally planted within humanity and all of creation. When God created and declared every aspect and realm of the creation good, we might say that it is filled with the overflowing of God's self-giving and infinite love so that soil and water and birds and mountains and fish and fruit and rocks are made with and filled with the divine love out of the overflow of God's own being. And therefore, we can say with like St. Francis of Assisi, we say, brother moon, brother sun, sister moon. There's relationship because of the flow of divinity in creation and in us. And furthermore, when God creates humanity, you and me, in the image of the perfect dancing interdependent flow of loving community, we too, each and every one of us, are filled with love and we're perpetually drawn to love, always longing and looking for love, sometimes in all the wrong places. That wasn't in the notes. <laughs> we long to find and experience the love of our own self, the love of God, the love of another human being, and our love for the created world. Richard Rohr says it this way, we might say that the Trinity is the soul of creation, and once we allow the entire universe to become alive for us, we are living in an enchanted world. Nothing is meaningless. Nothing can be dismissed. It is all whirling with the same beauty and the same radiance. And we must realize that we are the continuation of that radiance in our small segment of time on earth. And we can either allow it and let the Trinitarian flow flow through us, or we can deny it, which is to deny the divine image in each of us. We are the continuation of the radiance of the Trinity. This, to me, is compelling. We, the church, are intended to reflect and become the unified flow of God, loving and serving and submitting and honoring one another, just like our three-in-one God does. And we can either allow that flow of the triune love to come through us and flow through us into others, or we can deny it. We can choose in each moment to participate in our divine heritage and get into the flow of the triune love, or we can deny it and choose some other path. As Paul said earlier in chapter 2 to his letter of the church in Ephesus, God's plan has always been to make one new humanity. 
tearing down dividing walls of hostility between alienated groups of people, making peace, bringing reconciliation and unity between all people through God's one Son and one Spirit. And if we are all one with God, who is above all, through all, and in all, we are also intimately connected to each and every other person on this earth. I mean, Jesus taught about this, right? He knew that everything was interconnected. Each person was connected to one another. He seemed to say throughout his teaching, what you do to God, you do to me. And what you do to Jesus, you do to the least of these. And what you do to your neighbor, you do to yourself. And what you do to yourself, you do to your neighbor. We're all connected. Now this is good news, and it's really hard work. See, while the unity and oneness of the triune life of God is a fact, in my opinion, it is a reality, it is not fully realized. We must awaken, grow, mature, and as Paul says, make every effort to maintain the unity of this oneness. This divine reality within us and in the church must be cultivated and developed. Listen again to some of these phrases from Paul's letter in chapter 4 that I just read. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling. Make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit. Mature in your faith. Grow up in every way into Jesus Christ. Lead a life worthy of your calling with all humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. In light of this most gracious gift of being at one with God and one another, we are invited now to live a life worthy of that calling, a life worthy of God's overarching intention for all creation, which is to make one new humanity. God desires and is working to create in us the unity that exists between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the church. We don't create this unity. It is a gift to us, but we are called to nurture and develop it in a way that in the way that we treat one another. In Paul's explicit words, with all humility and gentleness, patience, and bearing with one another in love. I don't know about you, but those words are really hard to hear. <laughs> Humility, gentleness, patience, and love. I can see them in the Trinity, right? I can see how Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Redeemer, Sustainer, interact with one another. I can imagine how that is their community. That is their relationship. Of course that's how God is. But God, you want me to be that way? They are also indispensable, if we look at Paul's words here, for our corporate go growth as a church, our maturation into the unity of the Trinity. They're essential building blocks of unity because as one commentator I read this week, he said this, God has not only given the church its fundamental unity, but has also given the church a rich diversity of members. Each is a recipient of God's grace as the Spirit calls, equips, and gives people to the church. The goal behind such giving is not uniformity, but unity, which reflects and serves God's reconciliation of the whole creation in Christ. And then he says this, if we are not encountering and learning to love people who differ from us within the church, then something is wrong. This is not the healthy community that God desires. This gift of oneness and unity does not mean uniformity. And this gift of diversity and differences does not mean division. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
perfectly embody unity amidst diversity. All diversity is part of a greater unity and like the Trinity who self-sacrificially and mutually submits one to the other, this is the vision of the body of Christ on earth. And when we divide and separate ourselves based on exterior realities, our thoughts and opinions about the direction or decisions of the church, our race, our strengths, our weaknesses, our gender, neighborhood, theological, political ideas, should I keep going? When we separate because of anything, we are not living in the flow of the Trinity. This is often, at least I know in my own life, the work of my ego. And the ego always wants to divide and creates binaries. I am this and you are that. I am right, you are wrong. I am out and you are in. You with me? These surface-oriented distinctions often flow out of our own sense of not belonging and are often rooted in fear anxiety and shame and then they ripple out into the body of Christ so my question for myself and for you this morning is first and foremost do you know that you belong here and you are deeply loved Not because of who you are or anything you've achieved or done, but because the triune God says, welcome. I invite you to walk through the chapel on your way out today and see the icons of the Trinity that are set up through today, and they're all imaged or after Rublov's traditional Russian Orthodox icon. And you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit sitting at a table, and the icon is facing you, And there's an empty seat at that table. And the Trinity says, come on in. Come have a seat. You are at one with me, says God, who is above all, through all, and in all. And what fear or anxiety or shame keeps you from knowing and experiencing your belovedness? Friends, that is where we have to start. Because if we don't know that we're loved and we don't know that we're welcomed and belong, then we project that on one another. Second question. Who in God's family do you want to have more opportunity to listen to and learn from? What keeps you from seeing them and connecting with them? What effort could you make to maintain the unity of the Spirit there? Third question. Who in God's family is it hard for you to see, connect, and understand? What keeps you closed to them? With humility, gentleness, patience, and forbearing love, what effort could you make to maintain the unity of the Spirit there? Friends, this is my picture that I have of the Trinity. A mutual understanding, a constant submitting and bowing to one another. Jesus in particular, Paul says in Philippians, did not consider his equality with God as something to be taken advantage of, but rather emptied himself. This is what it means to be church, siblings. When we can open to the living the answers of these questions, we begin to cooperate with God's most gracious gifts of the triune unity and love and oneness. And when we make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit by living with humility, patience, gentleness, and love, we are growing up and maturing in the unity of the faith. We are, in fact, Paul says, maturing into the full stature of Christ. Our growth and maturity are both a gracious gift and a tireless effort. Our growth and maturity are both secure and fragile. Let me close with this quote quote from Martin Luther. Don't often quote from Martin Luther. Martin Luther said this, This life is not godliness, 
but the process of becoming godly. It's not health, but getting well. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not now what we shall be, but we are on the way. Amen? Amen. This process is not yet finished, but it is actively going on. This is not the goal, but it is the right road. At present, everything does not gleam and sparkle, but everything is cleansed. So friends, together, let's live a life worthy of our calling and make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Let's keep maturing into the unity of this faith and growing up in every way into Jesus the Christ who joins and knits us all together. Let's build a church community here at East Liberty Presbyterian Church where each part is working properly, promoting the body's growth and building itself up in love. Let's lead a life worthy of our calling to triune oneness with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Amen.